The final thing that we're going to quickly touch on are 3D blend spaces. These are set up similar to 1D and 2D. We're not going to concentrate on them even in the creation because the slope value may exceed the scope or the limits of a real tutorial. And instead, we'll just stick to the 1D and 2D blend spaces itself. But it's good to understand exactly how we can take this grid into a third dimension and query the blend spaces as they are. So let's go ahead and take something like the rifle, the 3D B space move strafe turn. And now it's getting excessive. And you can understand why exactly I said we were going to limit this. We have a simple grid like we had before, except this grid has been multiplied. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to shoot this up just a little bit. And we're going to scoot this up, pause this, and we're going to change the cell count of some of these. So then we're able to quickly understand what we're looking at. So let's change that to four and change that to four. And now it's going to be blown out of consideration and it's not an actual reflection. But it allows us to be able to see how things are pretty much blending together and merging. So if we were to simply go into the travel speed and start changing things, you can see one important difference. So let me go ahead and move that over. And now we have a box. Probably bring this down a little bit. Those alive. And this is what I, is important for you to understand. Like before, we have all of our pseudo examples, and they're not extremely important. We can actually remove them to make this easier to understand. Go ahead and pause this. I'm going to go ahead and pull this out. And then remove it. It's easier to do if you don't have everything playing real time. And we'll bring this back. And now this really lets you understand that the grid is not as intimidating as you once thought. So we have different animations. And in this case, we have a slope value. So when combining those, we're able to have a three-dimensional grid, which just means that we're multiplying the grid upwards. And the reason I wanted you to see this is, just like before, you'll notice that we're able to change the grid parameters to correspond with what we want to blend between. It's just a cube this time instead of actually having something that's a two-dimensional grid or plane like before. So we're going to go ahead and close the character tool, and we're not going to save any of that because we don't want to see it. Quickly to end this overview, I want to show exactly where these fragments come into play in the mannequin editor. So inside of animation, we're going to go into mannequin. We're going to let that load up. And then I'm going to stick this in the middle. We're going to click on mannequin. We're going to load the preview setup. Go ahead and save that. And what we want to do is load the player preview 3P, or third person. And move that over, move this down. And move this guy in. And what we want to do is we want to look at the motion movement. So the motion movement is how we actually move itself. And what it's using is actually a combination file or a combi file. So what we can go to is let's go to the rifle and we'll just choose option one. And it looks like it's actually just stand tack move rifle. But it's important to note that it says it's a blend space. This animation chosen is not a single animation itself. And this can trip people up because they think that this one animation inside of Mannequin itself, considering that there's nothing other than a small indicator, is a single animation, when it can be an entire combination of not only simple animations, but pseudo files with annotations that make up the entire movement of the character in the world. So don't let that trip you up and make you think that it's one animation when it can encompass all of the movement of the character itself in just this one fragment. So now that we've gone over the basis of what it actually means to lerp between the two animations to setting up a 2D blend space, going over the pseudo examples, going over now the 3D examples, and eventually into Mannequin, we can understand how we can create our own animations, and then we'll get them into the editor and have our own character move around in our world inside of CryEngine.